if you know all the details. That's why we have this morning uh, Mr. Jeremiah Owopele. Uh, he's a legal practitioner, and he'll you know, help us uh, look into the matter. So a fine morning to you, Mr. Owopele. Good morning, sir. It's good to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming on the program, and we hope we'll be able to see uh, a bit more clearly into this. Let me start from perhaps the most obvious uh, aspect of it, which is that um, the executive secretary is the top dog, so to speak, isn't he? And um, the minister has many responsibilities in, in the oil sector. Um, so why did he take the interest, the special interest, to actually write in a letter uh, reversing what the executive secretary had uh, set in motion. Yes, there is a board and all of that, but I'll leave you to explain all of that. Maybe you could just clear that bit out that it's not very usual, is it, for ministers to get directly involved in the day-to-day -day runnings of uh, parastatals under them. Well, uh, first, thank you for the opportunity to be on Seth uh, to give uh, very clear clarifications on the the, the seeming embroglio between the Executive Secretary and uh, the Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum, who incidentally in this situation is the Chairman of the Governing Council that oversees uh, the, uh, many other parastatals, including the Local Content Development Board. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have keenly listened to the, the arguments preferred, uh, with particular reference to the one that was anchored on this very station, and the impressions are a little bit quite... Uh, very quietly uh, um, unethical in my view. Now, oh, unethical. I've heard people well, say that the... Yes, very unethical. It, it's not good, and, and I'm saying this because I have here with me, and of course I've read uh, the act that uh, created the Local Content Development Board. Now, yes. if you take a very um, clear look at the act, you realize that beyond the fact that the, the executive secretary is, uh, the, the do, does the day-to-day -day running of the board. There are certain yes. clauses or sections in this law that gives ample powers to the Honorable Minister of State in his position of steed as the chairman of the Governing Council. And I'd like to uh, uh, just uh, make a few uh, readings from the law so that we can be very clear as to uh, the, the, the position or the legitimacy with which the Honorable Minister of Petroleum acted. Now, if you look at section 75, a says the council shall have powers to manage and superintend the affairs of the board, make rules and regulations for the proper functioning of the board. Now, I've just read you a direct representation of what is in the law. And having said that, let me also take the opportunity to read the minister's correspondence to the executive secretary. And maybe there's also need for me at this point to shed a little background on why all this is happening. And the letter which I have here, which was signed by the Honorable Minister of State, in his position as Chairman of the Governing Council. Let me read the first two paragraphs. It said, Of, it of which the Executive imperative. Secretary, sorry sir, of which the Executive this Secretary is, the, is also a member. Yes, he's, he's a Secretary of the Council. That's right. Yeah. Now, this is the letter he wrote. Um, reference personal announcement. The personal announcement signed by the Executive Secretary, NCDMB, dated 4th March 2004, with reference number NCDMB ES slash 1 slash 001 slash 03 slash 24 redeploying some management staff of the board of mm -hmm. It has become imperative to emphatically state that the Nigerian Oil and Gas Industry Content Act 2010 does not empower the executive secretary to redeploy or appoint management staff. Section 812B of the Act states that the executive secretary is responsible to the council. And this is a direct representation of the Act of the Council for the execution of the policies and the administration of the daily affairs of the board. The ES, therefore, does not have the power to redeploy, appoint, or employ management staff. Accordingly, the Zoom Secretary does not have the authority to overturn deployments or redeployments made by the Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum Resources and the, cha and the Chairman of the Governing Council of the board. Three, furthermore, Section 101 of the Act states that the Minister shall make regulations generally for the purpose of carrying out or giving effect to the provisions of the Act. The Executive Secretary is strongly advised not to unsub the powers of the Governing Council on any subject matter. In the light of the above, the redeployments announced by the Executive Secretary to all staff on the 4th of March 2024 is hereby overturned. 
Consequently, all affected staff should remain in their place of assignment as status quo remains. Please be guided, sign the Honorable Minister. Now, the question to ask at this point is, what is wrong in this correspondence that was sent to Executive Secretary? Okay, the but, but before, of the you law, go, sir, but before you go, sir, before yes. you go, sir, uh, thank you very much for you know, reading that selection out. Um, you see, the um, uh, Nigerian Content Development Board, um, uh, the Executive Secretary is the Chief Executive, is he not, of that particular... There's, there's, no, there's no dispute, there's no dispute, but I've just also read to you where it is clearly stated in Section 75, the Council, which is the Minister himself sharing the Council and other members, shall have powers to A, manage and superintend the affairs of the Board. What, is the, what are the affairs of the Board? In the letter, he also copiously quoted another section that empowers him to do what he's doing. Okay. It is the then, view of the framers of the law. Just a minute, just a minute. It is the view of the framers of this act that there could be a situation like this that an executive secretary could either act ultra-vice or outside his powers. And therefore, there's need to make clear regulations as to what he can do and what he cannot do. Now, if the executive secretary, in his wisdom, had written yeah. sought consent of the governing board before he takes these decisions, I'm sure there will be no end of this crisis. What the minister simply did was to carry out his function as chairman of okay. the governing council to say, uh, sir, can you just stop a bit, revert back to the council, let us look at this, let us deliberate, and let us give you the necessary approval that you need for you to carry out this assignment. What is wrong in this act? Okay, I, I, I thank you very much. I, I hear you, but there are a lot of people, perhaps,